New at 11 tonight, each night we bring you stories about the crime that's running rampant through our communities. What happens to the people who commit nonviolent crimes when they get out? Do they remain in the system? Are they unemployable? Do they get a second chance? Dr. Stanley Andre says everyone deserves a fresh start. He knows firsthand. Where we're essentially looking for proteins within the cell, so we extracted protein from the cells. Stanley Andres knows his science. He's a well-respected researcher at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. He's got two sets of letters behind his name, his MBA and his PhD. But those credentials didn't come easily. I got involved in making decisions that weren't the greatest. Andres is proof you can't judge a book by its cover. I graduated and almost immediately I graduated and went right off into prison. It was devastating, you know. I, I had this seemingly kind of good things going on, but then, you know, I'm a two-time convicted drug felon, and I'm sitting in prison. He was sentenced to 10 years on drug trafficking charges and expected to serve 66% of that time. While he was away, his father's type 2 diabetes got worse. His limbs had to be amputated. His father's loss spurred him to action. That was extremely you know, difficult to, to sit and kind of be, you know, sit in my little cell uh, and be more or less helpless to coping with my family. You know, my dad is what has given me the inspiration and the motivation to pursue and, and study diabetes. Andres was fortunate to qualify for a drug rehab program in a minimum security prison that would end his sentence within months of completion. When he finished, he was prepared to further his education, but he wasn't prepared for what came next. After re being rejected from everywhere, and it was coming close to me being released, um, and I had just gotten none but rejection, 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 rejection. That's when it began to sink in. He was now a convicted felon who would be required to disclose that on applications. The wording says, if you've been convicted, check the box and please explain the charges and the conviction. But for me and other people like me, it literally like brings this feeling in your gut that you, know, you read it and you, you instantly get the feeling that they don't want me. This, you know, why even continue the application? Because I know what comes next. And Reese was lucky. A major break followed. He was accepted at St. Louis University. I finished top of my class within the PhD program, uh, the highest GPA. Everyone accepted and, and kind of knew me, and I both, you know, academically and otherwise. Um, but they didn't know me because they didn't know I had a criminal conviction, that I was a two-time drug convicted felon. Now at Hopkins, the postdoctoral scientist is open about his past even working to help others. He's working to ban the box and stop the stigma. That is my hope, is that, you know, someone watching this will understand that everyone deserves a second chance. Everyone deserves the opportunity at, an, you know, obtaining an education. For, for a person like myself, I was, I was top of my class. Those other programs that didn't, that didn't let me in, they, they missed out. Society is missing out on uh, talent. indicative of them being uh, insulin resistant. We gave them insulin, and insulin was not able to increase this particular protein, which is called AKT. Uh, and that's, you know... And Dr. Andres says while there's still work to be done, we are making progress in Maryland. The question about convictions is banned statewide on job applications, but they're still working to get it off of college applications. When Dr. Andres is not in his lab, he volunteers his time with Baltimore City State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby's program, Aim to Be More. It helps first-time nonviolent felony drug offenders.